Good morning, everyone. Today's topic is basics of immunohistochemistry. As the word itself suggests, immunohistochemistry consists of the reaction between antigen and antibody in the histological tissue section. The immunohistochemistry is based on antigen antibody recognition in ant tissue. Immunohistochemistry is more than a special stain as it is used routinely in surgical pathology. It gives a relative amount of antigen in the cellular architecture. In this photo, you can see the herpes simplex virus infection, a staining nuclear and cytopl cytoplasmically in a patient positive for herpes simplex virus and this IHC is performed on cervical biopsy specimen. Now we will see the history of immunohistochemistry. In this photo, we can see scientist Albert Hewitt-Kunz, who for the first time in year 1945 did use an labeled antibody to detect the pneumococcal antigen in an tissue. Now the aim and application of IHC. The aim of the IHC to detect the antigen causing least damage to the tissue and using least amount of the antibody. The IHC can be applied for tumor pathology and non-tumor pathology. In tumor pathology, we can use the IHC to do the screening diagnosis of the malignancies to detect the mates also. We can see the prognosis of the patient and the response given by the patient towards the treatment. For non-tumor pathology, IHC can be used in case of neurodegenerative diseases, muscle diseases, as well as amyloid doses. The basic principle of immunohistochemistry is to sharply visualize the target in the tissue with the help of an antibody seen under the microscope. Here the signal is amplified and the background non-specific staining or noise is blocked. In this photo, we can see the tissue containing the antigen of interest which will bind to the primary antibody which will bind to the secondary antibody conjugated with the horse radish per oxidase polymer and the DAP that is 3,3-diamyobenzidine is used as the chromogenic substrate which will give the brown precipitate when react with the HRP. Under the microscope, it will show the beta pancreatic cells. Now, what is antigen? The antigen is foreign to the human cell. It could be a protein. Antigen can be classified into endogenous antigen or exogenous antigen. Endogenous antigen are the self-antigen which due to negative selection by the T cell do not, in, do not show any immune response. But if the endogenous antigens are produced by bacterial or viral infection, then the immunity launches the antibodies. The exogenous antigens can be simple or can be complete antigen or can be partial antigen. The partial antigen is further divided into simple antigen or complex antigen. The partial antigen are also called as heptin as it, will, it cannot induce the antibody production individually. It can create the immune response only, with, only when attached to a carrier protein. The antigen is capable of inducing antibody formation. The epitope is the smallest part of the antigen which will bind specifically to the paratope of an antibody. In this diagram, these are the blue colored triangular antigens which are binding to the paratope of this antibody and then giving the fluorescence. Now, what are antibody? Antibodies, the word comes from the, from the German word and the antibody came from the German word anticorper. The anticorper can be a protein or a globin or a peptide or a polysaccharide. The antibody binds specifically to the epitope of an antigen in a key and lock manner. Here the antibody will act as a key and antigens epitope will act as a, here the, the paratope of antibody will act as a lock and the epitope of an antigen will act as a key. Each antibody has two basic units that is heavy chain and light chain. Each heavy chain consists of three constant domains and one variable domain whereas each light chain consists of one variable domain and one constant domain. So the Y-shaped antibody has a stem and two fork-like branches. The two fork-like branches 
forms the antigen binding region and the stem of the antibody will form the fc region the, the fc region binds to the cell surface receptor now the variable region in the fab fragment of the antibody will differ in every antibody and these heavy chain and light chain are attached to each other by disulfide bonds disulfide bond this is the amino terminal and this is the carbohydrate terminal of the antibody there are five classes of the immunoglobulin namely igg igm iga igd ige the antibody can itself serve as a antibody and as well as an antigen here you can see the primary antibody is the source of antigen for the secondary antibody now if the antibody are pre incubated with the papain enzyme it will cleave to give fragments of the fab and fc when the antibody is pre incubated with the pepsin enzyme it will give the fragment of fab and multiple fragments of fc then igg1 is the most abundant antibody in the serum and igg4 is the least abundant antibody in the human serum except igg2 all the isotypes of igg can cross the human placenta whereas igg1 and igg3 act as a opsonizing antibody iga forms the localized immunity and are present in the secretions of the body for example tears based breast milk it forms the line of defense just like skin igm is a pentamer igd is associated with the surface of the b cells and igg and the ige is increased in the parasitic infection and it is related to hsr1 it bounds to the mast cell for ihc staining and protocols the antibodies are conveniently classified as monoclonal antibody and polyclonal antibody monoclonal antibody are expensive and the single antibody species whereas polyclonal antibody are cheaper but it is a mixture of antibodies the monoclonal antibody the word itself suggests mono means single clonal means unique similar clone of each other antibody means the cell coming from the b cell so these are the clones which came from the b cells they have the capacity to divide infinite number of times which came from the myeloma cells used in the hybridoma technique to produce the monoclonal antibody the polyclonal antibody can create the problems in ihc staining due to the non specific background staining hence for monoclonal antibody are highly reliable ihc staining the concentration and purity levels of specific antibody are always higher in monoclonal antibody in this diagram you can see the monoclonal antibody binding specifically to the particular antigen now antigen and antibody reaction depends upon the affinity valency avidity of an antibody the affinity word comes from the latin word affinus which means connected it is the interaction between the epitope and paratope of an antigen and antibody so here you can see in this diagram the single site of attachment between the epitope and paratope now what is the valency of an antibody the valency of an antibody is the number of antigen with which the antibody can bind the valency can differ for monomer dimer and pentamer antibody the valency for monomer antibody is 2 and the valency for dimer antibody is 4 the valency for pentamer antibody for example igm is 10 the what is avidity avidity is the overall strength of the association between the epitope and paratope in this diagram you can see the avidity of pentamer igm is more than the affinity as shown in this diagram the avidity is always higher than the summations of the affinities igm being the pentamer will be having more affinity will be having more avidity but less affinity now we will see the steps for doing the isc staining protocol the first step is fixation and processing as soon as we receive the tissue and gross the tissue containing the antigen of interest we will fix and process the tissue for fixation we use a tissue processor which could be manual or it could be automatic in manual it contain the 12 jar which will take 14 hours to complete the process and this is the automatic tissue processor both are manufactured by lyca company 
the aim of the tissue fixation is to keep the cell in life like state permanently the mechanism of fixation is by inhibiting the lysosomal enzymes and preventing the proteolytic degradation the factors affecting the fixation are, are the concentration of the fixative the time for which the fixation is done and the amount to which the fixative has penetrated the tissue the fixation can be perfusion fixation or the immersion fixation the perfusion the there are two groups of fixative that is the fixative which can cross link or the fixative which can do precipitation the cross linking fixatives one molecule of fixation will bind to two molecules of the antigen and stabilize them but in precipitation fixative the soluble proteins are converted into insoluble solid aggregates the formalin is used as a standard tissue fixative as it is easily available affordable and colorless and sterilizes the tissue and prevents the tissue from physical damage and it acts as a cross linking fixative the next step is block making if we fix the tissue and process the tissue and immediately cut the tissue into the sections then it will jam our blood so it is important to do the block of the tissue which differs for frozen technique and paraffin embedded tissue sections here you can see a cryostat which is made by lyca company used in frozen tissue block and section making this is the control panel which will regulate the temperature between minus 20 to minus 80 degree centigrade and this is the handle of the rotatory microtome in inside of the cryostat you will see the slide and then the blade is fixed and the tissue moves here is the dial to adjust the distance between the tissue and the knife this is the example of the paraffin embedded human tissue block now the next step is section cutting we need to cut the thin sections measuring in ranging in size from 2 by 2 by 0.3 cm the thickness can be kept between 3 to 5 micron which resembles to the thickness of individual live cell in human the tissue can be cut with the help of an instrument known as microtome the microtome can be automatic or it can be manual in manual we need to rotate the handle in microtome the tissue is fixed but the blade moves then it is kept in a water bath so as to remove the crinkles in the tissue section and then put on a slide clean slide which is pre-treated with a egg albumin and then put on a hot plate for fixation then staining is done over a thin section the technique for the processing fixing and cutting in case of frozen differs from that done for paraffin embedded sections in terms of time more time is needed for paraffin embedded sections if we do it manually it is easy to perform the frozen sections but the antigens are well preserved in frozen sections as there is no chemical fixation in frozen and therefore no antigen retrieval is needed for frozen sections the durability of tissue is for many many years in case of paraffin embedded tissue block as well as tissue sections the compatibility with both enzymatic and fluorescent ihc protocol are shown equivalently by frozen and paraffin embedded tissue block and section prior treatment is needed for paraffin embedded tissue block and sections before doing the ihc protocol but not needed in case of the frozen tissue sections the next step is deep paraffinization and rehydration that is de-waxing the slides and washing it properly the next step is antigen retrieval the antigen retrieval or antigen unmasking or epitope retrieval is used to retrieve the antigen which we have lost in fixation so it can be done with the help of it induced epitope retrieval technique or proteolytic epitope retrieval technique in heat induced epitope retrieval higher degree of temperature and pure distal water gives superior results in proteolytic in epitope retrieval the enzymes such as pronase kinase protease trypsin are used in this diagram you can see the tissue containing the antigen binds to the proteins non specifically so if we apply the primary antibody the epitope will not be free so the paratope will not get attached and giving false negative results but if we 
but if we do the antigen retrieval technique using the citrate buffer heated for a given time then the epitope will be free and the anti body will bind to the epitope giving the precipitation reaction due to the cleavage of the bond between the proteins the technique which are used to heat and do the antigen retrieval technique are the steam pressure cooker then autoclave then hot air oven and then microwaves microwaves are most commonly used antigen retrieval technique consists of 10 minutes consisting of two cycles of 5 minute of each in in between take 1 minute so as to check the quality and contagion quantity of antigen retrieval solution after 10 minutes the coupling jar is taken outside containing the slides and the antigen retrieval solution now what are the results of antigen retrieval solu solution then you can see here if no antigen retrieval solution is used in the tissue will show less or no antigen but if we do the antigen retrieval technique then the strong intense precipitation will be seen here in this diagram p27 was detected in prostate tissue uh, heated for 95 degree celsius for 10 minutes the ph can be acidic or it can be basic or neutral uh, depending upon the targeted antigen commercial antigen retrieval solution are also available now next step is blocking the endogenous enzyme the blocking endogenous enzyme that is for oxidase and alkaline phosphatase is necessary so as to avoid the false positive reactions so the alkaline phosphatase activity is higher in the intestine and in the frozen tissue sections and the per oxidase activity is higher in the liver in the kidney and in the organs containing the red blood corpuscles in this diagram you can see the brownish precipitation without blocking the endogenous enzyme but after blocking the endogenous enzyme it gives the antigen of interest of strong precipitation now this is the antigen in the tissue the primary antibody is attached to which secondary antibody is attached which is conjugated with the help of biotin and enzyme used is per oxidase then the dap chromogen was used so it will react with the endogenous per oxidase giving a false positive reaction but if we block this endogenous endogenous per oxidase then it will give only brown precipitate if pathological antigen and will block the non specific endogenous background staining the next step is to block the non specific antibody the non specific antibody can be blocked by using the serum from the same species we only need to pre incubate the serum for an hour for an hour in the antigen containing solution where the concentration of antigen should be 10 molar times more than that of the antibodies hence for serum is used as the common blocking agent universal blocking buffer is also available which contains bsa tritin and cold fish gelatin is primary antibody application the primary antibody is the antibody which will attach to the antigen and then you will detect the primary antibody using a label secondary antibody so correspondingly there are two principal immunohistochemistry methods which are direct and indirect in direct antibody in direct method the primary antibody is labeled whereas in indirect method the secondary antibody is labeled the next step is the is the application is the application of the secondary antibody the secondary antibody is used to attached to the primary antibody where primary antibody acts as an antigen for the secondary antibody the secondary antibody is used to do the amplification the secondary antibody are present in three isoforms that is fab fc or multiple fragments of fc or multiple fragments of fab the whole form of igg is available affordable and suitable for ihc
the secondary antibody may cross react with the primary antibody hence for we need to conjugate primary antibody with the help of avidin and digoxin later on the avidin and digoxin will be labeled with the help of streptavidin and anti digoxin antibodies the next step is amplification amplification means to increase the signal strength the signal here means the specific antigen and antibody reaction the amplification system can simply consist of a reporter label directly conjugated to the secondary antibody here you can see the tissue containing the antigen the primary antibody the primary antibody attached to the secondary antibody secondary antibody is attached to the amplifier that is abc avidin biotin complex which will interact with the enzyme for oxidase now another amplification system that is polymer system is also available the popular polymer system has compact polymer which is more favorable than the dextran polymer in this diagram you can see a dextran polymer which to which the 100 molecules of per oxidase enzyme can bind simultaneously and up to 80 molecules of antibody can bind to it if you do not use this amplification system then the enzyme and antibody will attach to primary antibody and antigen like this giving the focal and less intense precipitation endogenous biotin can need to be blocked as it also gives false positive staining the amplification kit are available in ready to use forms now the reporter labeling can be done by using enzyme or the fluorescent tag the enzymatic method uses a enzyme and and or a chromogen which is initially colorless and in fluorescence detection we use a fluorophore which is a small chemical compound which emits the light the commonly used fluorophores are fluorescein isothiocyanate and cyanin now there are three methods namely direct fluorescence indirect fluorescence and multi fluorescence in direct fluorescence the first we will see the fluorescence technique now consider the particle in its ground level g0 state when a light ray is put on the particle then it will gain the energy and will jump to high energy state that is g1 state so this is known as state of excitation then step 2 is internal conversion at this g1 level it will try to convert into different forms with losing the energy and eventually after some time it will come to the ground state after emitting the energy in the form of a fluorescence so direct fluorescence the primary antibody is labeled and the label can be of biotin or fluorescent dye or an enzyme then the fluorophore can be visualized using a fluorescent microscopy and the enzyme can be visualized with the help of a light microscope or an electron microscope when the dab is used it is better to use the electron microscope as it is the electron dense material as dab gives intense color on light microscopy now we will see indirect fluorescence detection in this the primary antibody should always be free of label and secondary antibody is labeled it is a more sensitive method as it is used to detect the antigen which is weakly expressed in the tissue hence for indirect fluorescence technique is widely used this diagram is showing the direct and indirect labeling here you can see the cell containing the tissue and this is the primary antibody and this is enzymatic tag this is secondary antibody and this is fluorophore this is also fluorophore a multi fluorescence technique in this multiple antigen can be detected in the same tissue using lesser time lesser reagent and lesser amount multi fluorescence is the technique in which the overlapping of antigen can occur so multiple antigen can be detected in the same antigen in the lesser time and using lesser amount of reagent so it can use direct fluorescence technique or indirect technique or both of them so here you can see the bluish color is imparted to the nucleus the greenish color is showing the cytoskeletal structure and reddish orange structure is imparted due to the proteins enzyme reporters the enzyme when 
react with the substrate will form enzyme substrate complex being a high energy state it is transient one so the enzyme will again free from the substrate to form a product initially the enzyme is water soluble and colorless but when it converted into product it will be water insoluble solid aggregate imparting a color which will be seen under microscopy as a precipitation commonly used enzymatic labels are per oxidase and alkaline phosphatase the enzyme and chromogenic substrate combination determines the final permanent staining color for example 3,3 diaminobenzene in chromogen when used with per oxidase enzyme gives brown precipitate due to its oxidation if we use AEC that is 3 amino 9, 9 ethyl carbazole, it will lead to red color precipitation. Next step is chromogen staining. The enzyme can be used with different group of chromosomes. The alcohol solubility of chromogen is important to notice as if we use the alcohol soluble chromogen, then we need to use progressive non-alcoholic hemotaxaline as a counter stain, for example, mare, so as to avoid the removal of the colored product, which is alcohol soluble. For alcohol soluble chromogen, the section must be mounted in an aqueous permanent mounting medium that is usually hardened in the oven after application. Next step is counter staining. The main aim of the counter staining is to give contrast to the background cellular architecture so as to highlight the antigen of interest. The counter staining depends upon the method of detection that is for enzymatic detection, we will use only nuclear counter staining and for fluorescent detection method, we need to use the nuclear as well as cell membrane counter stain. For nuclear counter staining, hemotaxaline is most commonly used stain. The base stain is always the one which will lead to absence or very less amount of the staining in the background as a non-specific staining. The slides need to be arranged in a horizontal manner as it will take only 50 microliter to 200 microliter of stain to stain effectively. This table shows some common counter stain and their targets. For example, chemical stain, namely Mayer's hemotaxaline, will target the nuclei and imparts the blue to white color due to the DNA containing in it. Now, background staining or is the non-specific staining which has occurred due to the reactions apart from the antigen and antibody reaction. This may be due to non-specific protein binding. So we need to use the serum from the same species pre-incubated for an hour. Then the paraffin could be removed incompletely. So remove the paraffin completely. Then thick preparation we need to avoid preferred the section thickness between 3 mm to 5 mm then the antibody concentration need to be tighter decrease the concentration decrease the incubation time and decrease the temperature of reaction as and when needed endogenous biotin can give false positivity so block the avidin the chromogen product to intense then look for the time of the chromogen substrate reaction filter the chromogen and decrease the chromogen concentration now, there can be incomplete rinsing of slides, so follow the proper rinsing protocols. What is artifactual staining? The artifactual staining may be due to undissolved precipitates of the chromogen or the counter stain. The presence of the chromogen or counter stain can be present in the slide, so we need to filter the chromogen or the counter stain. The endogenous pigment may be confused with specific immunoreactivity as false positivity so check for the negative control for the presence of these pigments use the chromogen of contrasting color the microbiological com contamination need to be checked in the form of expiry and use of fresh reagent always next step is mounting which is the last step in the ihc staining protocol we need to mount the tissue section with the help of the cover slip and the mounting media which will add the cover slip to the tissue sections. The aim is to preserve the tissue sections for many years. The mounting medium need to be clear, transparent. It should sterilize the tissue and the refractive index of the mounting media should be similar to that of the tissue that is 1.53 micron approximately. The mounting media can be organic or it could be aqueous. In organic, it will adherent to the cover slip and tissue on its own, but in aqueous 
mounting media we need to fix the power slip to the slide with the help of a nail varnish then we need to clear off the slide of paraffin with the help of a xylene then choice of the mounting medium depends upon the use of the chromogen and the substrate and the enzyme we will see how to mount a slide apply drops of mounting medium on the tissue section then hold the cover slip at an angle of 45 degrees so that the mounting media will spread along the cover slip and then allow it to dry after doing the ihc staining we need to look for the controls as there is necessity there is necessity to look for the controls in ihc staining so the specificity of the staining depends on two independent factor that is the tissue control and the reagent control in reagent control it includes the absorption or pre absorption test done for the antibody and tissue control can be positive or can be negative the positive tissue control is the one which contains the protein of interest and the negative control is the one where the protein of interest is absent the criteria affecting the specificity a need to be looked for better ihc staining the internal control for example the internal control can be present in the normal tissue and can also be present in an pathological specimen so we need to see and compare them for example ascendant is present normally in peripheral nerve sheets and melanocyte but it is also present in melanoma cells after doing ihc staining we need to store the data for many years so store them in a dark area for 4 degree celsius especially when you are using a fluorescent dye it will be avoiding the photo bleaching and decrease the rate of evaporation as you will be using permanent aqueous mounting media for longer storage we need to store the tissue sections at minus 20 to minus 80 degree celsius in the freezer it will do hamper the antigen but it antigen retrieval technique can help to retrieve the antigen once again for delayed processing the tissue should be fixed in 70% strong alcohol the silica gel sachets can be kept in the slide storage box also this is the ihc machine which is the automatic one and near to it is the monitor which can see and save the data of ihc now how to interpret the ihc slide the ihc precipitation can be nuclear as shown in this above diagram it can be cytoplasmic or it can be membranous there are few ihc markers shown in this table just like cytokeratin marker for epithelium vimentin marker for mesenchymal desmin marker for smooth muscle myoglobin marker for skeletal muscle and organ specific markers are estrogen progesterone and her2 new receptor for breast this is the photo showing the normal human skin which is positive for cytokeratin stain and the inside shows the negative control taken from the identical assay without primary antibody application this photo is of normal human cerebellum showing positivity for adenosine a1 receptor and the inside negative control is taken from the identical assay without primary antibody application this photo is showing lr leucine rich repeat kinase 2 staining in the normal human cerebellum which is showing brown precipitate in the body of the purkinje cell then axons and dendrites of the purkinje cells and the inset shows the negative control taken from the identical assay without application of primary antibody this is the photograph showing normal human tonsil with the bluish area is the germinal center containing b cells and the surrounded brownish precipitate positivity due to t cells which is cd7 positive which is a mature t cell marker and the inset shows the negative control which is taken from identical assay without primary antibody application so this is the photo showing the normal breast tissue and this is the p63 dot like linear pattern positivity which is p63 is homologous to p53 and this is the cytoplasmic calcolin positivity 
both are positive for myoepithelial cells normally the if this is focally positive then it will suggest you of in situ carcinoma and if it is and if it is attenuated then it will suggest the it will suggest the papillary uh, carcinoma the calpolin is the cytoplasmic stain this is the photo showing the cardiac drop eye staining this the these are the cardiomyocytes which contain the drop eye showing positivity and this is the photo of normal spleen and these are the trabecular vessels which are showing cytoplasmic membranous positivity for vascular cellular adhesion one molecule as when the endothelium is stimulated by the cytokine release it will show positivity for b cam1 so that the wbc will came and attach to the endothelial cells and the insect shows the negative control taken from the identical assay without primary antibody application the photograph shows the beta islet cells of the pancreas which are cytoplasmically positive for chromogranin a staining the chromogranin a stain is present in the neurosecretory vesicles and the insert shows the negative control taken from identical assay without application of primary antibody this photo shows the normal thyroid tissue and these are the follicular cells which are stain intensely brown due to thyroid transcription factor 1 expression these are the reference which i have taken for doing the ppt there is one video from youtube i have taken for understanding this i would like to show it to you if you allow me for few more minutes so this is in this video the uh, lab technician is preparing the process, process and reagent so as to do the ihc staining so initially it will take 1 minute he has labeled this histoclear histoclear is nothing but the decreasing concentration of the alcohol so as to deparaffinize the slides so as to make them paraffin free and then dipping it into xylene which will clear the alcohol then the slides are washed with phosphate buffered saline and these are ready to next processing now antigen retrieval technique citrate buffer is used and taken in a poplin jar and then put for incubation in a microwave oven then this is marked with a pap pen so that the antigen will remain in the tissue for the better enhancement of the precipitation after every step we need to wash with the help of phosphate buffered saline step 3 blocking blocking agent is applied artificial ready to use kits are available for blocking the endogenous enzyme as well as antibodies now we need to incubate this our primary antibody is applied then incubate for an hour then wash three times for 5 minute each add secondary antibody and do the similar process the secondary antibody is conjugated with biotin this is universal antibody blocker consisting of triton whole gelatin fish gel this is amplification system avidin biotin complex 
so as to enhance the precipitation it will bind to the secondary as well as primary antibody but more to the secondary antibody now staining staining means adding an enzyme and the colorless chromogenic substrate so dab is used as a chromogen over here which will react with the uh, enzyme per oxidase here you can see motaxelin will be used as a counter stain as this is a enzymatic process we need to only add hemotaxelin as a counter stain mixture well. the slide is ready now desilation and clearing means to remove the uh, water solution and then to fix the uh, tissue using the mounting media as we perform the staining in a aqueous medium but we store the tissue in the organic state or the paraffin state and even we do the paraffin embedding in organic paraffinized state mounting how to mount the slide application of dpx the cover slip are available in different uh, form that is 50 mm 60 mm 30 mm 70 mm you can see the results over monitor this is brownish precipitate given by dab thank you